You're now rocking with the best. DJ Sean Nice, the Blend King. Weight of love on my shoulder. I thought that it would be easier than this. I thought my heart had grown colder. But the warmth of your kiss I can't dismiss. Though my past has left me bruised. I ain't hiding from the truth. When the truth won't let me lie. Two 
pull them up, agree to yeah. purpose, and whatever. Yeah. We agree. I like that. Yeah. Go ahead, baby. My chat went to, went to, went. Oh, you, th- you, you was ready for me to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, shoot. Oh, y'all hear me? I sound like a gorilla. Sometimes they don't, though. You be talking a little, so. Yeah. Can you hear him? Everybody yeah, hear some okay. good? Okay. I bet. Big up, sis. DJ Shine Night. In the building. Yo, we be over on the side, like, getting it, y'all. We be trying to get dialed in as early as possible so he can have a nice little cook session. That be his fault. <laughs> he be on black people. Nice was here early. Uh, you was early. Stand by my brother. <laughs> so I'm going to do something don't nobody oh. know about, and I didn't tell anybody about it, but I have to be obedient. So when we got done with our Taylor talk last week, my mom was texting me. She was like, yo, you seem a little off tonight. I'm like, what you mean? Because we partying. We having a good time. Like, we was partying before we got started. We partied after. But I got a chance to go back and look at the episode. Mm-hmm. And with that being said, I have to be obedient to what God told me to do and what I need to do as a man. That is apologize. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you didn't feel a way about it. You slept good in my arms that night. But at the end of the day, what I realized is this is a platform of us. It's not you. It's not me. It's us. That means you have a voice. That means you have opinions. You have thoughts. You have perspectives that not only do I value, but there's a lot of men and women out there who value them as well. And regardless if it was just too much wine flowing before we got started, we just got too hyped, it was unfair to you first. And it was un- right. and, No, no, no. Let me get it out. Okay. And it was unfair to everybody watching because they come to hear us. And what God showed me was I don't know which sentence or, or, or which demonstration you were building that I've cut you off, but... Had you been able to finish, there's no telling how it could have blessed somebody. If I would have let you go and get your stuff out to, to full formation, somebody could have been blessed. Somebody could have got clarity. And for whatever reason, it wasn't intentional or anything like that, yeah. I cut those things off, and that's not cool. So I apologize. And I'm doing it this way because I'm the type of man I believe if you spill something on stage, come back and clean it up on stage. Too many men and women spill something on stage, and then you try to clean it up in the dressing room. Yeah. And that's cowardly. Yeah. So since it happened on this stage, I'm going to humble myself on this stage and apologize to my queen and to anybody else who felt like they were robbed of that experience because we have a tempo. And um, to, to, to you men out there, like, let's keep it G. Don't be the type of man that can punch a hole in a wall and you can throw your kid 50 feet in the air, but you emotionally weak. Um, mm. if I can humble myself and apologize to my queen in front of hundreds of thousands of people, you no longer have an excuse why you can't go apologize for once. Mm. So make that right. Mm. Um, yeah, facts. Ooh, hold and on, so, I gotta, you keep going, I gotta tell you something, I can't stand And so loud. tonight, I got two things that's different. No wine, I got water, and this is Crystal Light. I want you thinking up here, yo, he up there knocking out some lean. He went from worse to worse. Um, and I have a humble heart mm-hmm. to make sure that not just tonight, but every night goes the way according to God's plan and not my own. Oh, baby, you know I know what I love, but you know what you just did? This is what you're trying to do. Oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> Man, I apologize for everything Dallas did. I apologize for that, that, that Sean Nice. I don't, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for Ruben Studdard back in 2004. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is my son. But that's real talk. Okay, that's you know what's what I mean? up. That's I mean, I, don't, I want you to know I didn't take anything because we picked a subject where we were agreeing to disagree. Yeah. And so m- most of our table talks, we're, we, we just, but we picked the topic that we knew would kind of get heated. But yeah. um, I do remember you coming back to me saying something about your mama texting you. You know, your mama's, know you mama's will check you. And I was like, what's wrong with her? Yeah, but, like- but I guess... And, you know, I don't never really go back to see what people say. I don't, I don't do all of that. Yeah. But if your mom said, you, you know, she caught some things, and but I didn't feel a, a certain way. Yeah. But when you told me about it, I think we watched that Sunday, uh, uh, Taylor, I mean, um, Keith Gates, and we kind of both got some things from it. Yeah. But, you know. And that was for me. Because okay. at this stage of my life, it's not about being famous or being known. It's about wisdom and enlightenment. And I can't achieve either one without walking in the spirit of humility. And so, I see what you're trying to do. I need that piece of paper you wrote that on. That's a oh. receipt. <laughs> I would like to have that. If I can cash that in. All right. <clears throat> so now in great spirit, we can cook. Yeah, let's cook. And I'm opening it, and my wife's going to kick off today. I'm nervous. 
because your stuff be so dope. I was nervous when you came around the corner with that dress on. I've been stalking you for the past 20 minutes. Yeah, me, Kendall is. I was yeah. like, Doritos, hook me up, man. <laughs> Feel like Kane in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave it on that. Pillow yes, Lord. All, All right. right. Amen. <laughs> so last week, we took the time to tackle the challenging topic of agreeing to disagree, which is a doorway of escape that we can enter into by making a conscious decision of forfeiting our personal agendas when we are unable to join on one accord as a means of removing the spirit of pride and defer to the spirit of harmony rather than continuing to force individual opinions that too often result in emotional clashing. However, <clears throat> while this is an acceptable tool of last resort, the ultimate goal and premier target should be one of two people lovingly locking into agreement because behind that door awaits all of the treasures of heaven that few ever get to experience and enjoy in, in full measure because keys of pride, ego, and selfishness are unable to turn the lock. When we enter into agreement, we both stand as a witness to one another, holding each other accountable to the goal we have joined forces in achieving. Mm -hmm. And when God sees our spirit of unity at work, it is a reflection of his holy trinity, and he is touched to move on our behalf with the hopes and the expectation of creating even greater harmony and unity in that relationship. So when we stand in total and complete agreement, all negative external third-party influences are easily identified and stand no chance of interrupting our grand design. Mm. That's cool. Yeah. You see, I've been touched. Like, you too far away. Man, you can handle it. We need a new table. <coughs> yeah, smaller. Oh, we could just, I could pull it up. You could slide over. You can sit on my lap next week. <laughs> that That's going to be a 15 then. minute episode. <laughs> <laughs> the chair yeah. is big enough. Listen, right. so I don't never really, like, I don't ever really say much. Well, I mean, you, you, I let him start it off, and he has, like, some very powerful and cute things to say. And so I just kind of bounce off of him but after watching sunday sermon with bishop td jakes it was just like so much stuff in there that i was like yo mm -hmm. and then after that i went and i ordered myself a new book yeah yeah, yeah. and that's what i've been saying all day just want to make out that quiet time to read yeah and that's not that well i was never like that but what i'm realizing is we will never grow by doing the same old things we always do. Like T, watching so much television, I believe since COVID, I have, we have watched everything on Netflix. Everything. Have, uh, Sean Nice, <laughs> the you you, have you watched everything <laughs> on, on Netflix so far? So I'm, I found myself starting to get like irritated and frustrated and I think that certain music you listen to, certain things that you watch, all of that stuff comes across in your house. Mm -hmm. It comes across with your partner, it comes across with your kids, it comes across with me and Leo, <laughs> okay? I'll be like, oh my God, why did I get a dog? I love him though. But it starts to come across because what you feed your spirit, man, is what you're going to, you digest it and then you eat, okay? It starts right. to come out. And so I was reading the book and uh, watching the sermon, I wrote down some notes and I came up with this little thing right here and you can tell me what you think. Let's do it. I'm excited. Say less. The power in agreement, <coughs> of agreement, the power of agreement, in agreement. If two people are together and they do not agree, it's not a, it's not a vision, it's a division. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. That was the wrong one, but I think God let that happen and it started off really, really good. Got wrong. First off, we have to know that we can and will be victorious because we are Jesus, our Father, we're his kids. Okay? And victorious people were never meant to settle for normal. Correct. Okay? The one thing that I want to start off with asking you, Dorikas, Sean Nice, everybody that's watching, do you think it's hard to agree because we have already planned our lives the way we see it and not God? Absolutely. Sean, you paying attention over there? I'm going to call you out. I'm going to be like, Sean, give me the answer. Really, do you think that we have so many problems because we already got everything planned out the way we think it should go? Correct. Before you met me, before you met your wife, we all, I want a woman like this, I want it like this, I guess she got to be like this, he got to be like that, so, so, you right. know what I mean? Right. I admit that so often I have held tightly to my own plans and to the outcome that I think that should come to pass. And I feel it has caused a lot of disagreements within my marriage, business because I want it the way I want it. Mm. 
Sometimes in order to keep your marriage right, your business right, your friendships, etc., you have to face the death of what you thought your life would look like. Mm. We chase perfection. We chase right. I want to be right. Right, 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 right. Yeah. We want it so bad, we chase it. We angle our cameras trying to catch it. We take 20 shots in hopes to finding it. And then even our good photos, we have to go and color correct them, filter them, crop them, <laughs> all to find perfection. T.D. Jake says the challenge in letting go of what you already have in mind. That's a challenge. Mm -hmm. That's a challenge because it will never go your way. The key is when you come together with someone, you let go of what you wanted. Let God do what he has planned, and then you'll understand or expect the power in agreement. Sure. Also, he said this. Look for the foundation in someone. I was looking for the foundation in you. So when I saw that your foundation was good, then I, I knew I had, I had found somebody I could build with. Right? right? Like so once I found somebody I could build with, and I'm, and I'm still letting go of all of the things that I had planned, now I feel like we're coming, we can come into the power of agreement. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, does that make sense? Why are y'all laughing? Because it's dope. Like, you know what I mean? We, we, we watching you science this out. <clears throat> That's the end. <laughs> <laughs> the end. I think you hit it right on the head, though, because I think it's so, it's so much of a challenge for two people to come into agreement because nine times out of ten when we sit at the table, we're already in agreement with ourselves. Pretty much. So there's no room for the other person's perspective. There's no room for their opinion. And that's almost... It's almost the same as having unrealistic expectations. So in order for two people to come into agreement, you got to be willing to at least pour half this cup out. If I come over here and this cup is all the way filled to the top, you can't pull, pour in any other substance of your heart or any other contents of your spirit into a glass that's already filled. Mm -hmm. And everything that we're seeing with so many divorces and, and, and murders and, and separations and so on and so forth is because everything is spilling out and you lose everything in the long run. I agree. I was the, the the thing we were both watching it together. I remember when Jace was kind of talking about like how it took him and Sarita years yeah. to get where they are now. Yeah. And I think with us, even from the last last week, Taylor talk agreeing to disagree. We, it's just been six years for us. Yeah. So with us being open and honest and sharing our real and our raw and not trying to polish it up and make it look like yeah. it's good. <laughs> so when we stop the cameras, we around the corner scrapping and right. get on here and be like, so, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're honestly being honest and showing that we found somebody who had a great foundation and now we're building. And Rome wasn't built in a day. Right. This house that we're sitting in, that wasn't built in a day. It takes time, especially, you know, if you want it to, 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 to stand and to last. And so I feel like everything that we go through from last week, from agreeing to disagreeing, from your mom texting you, from you sitting down and saying what you're saying, like that is growth that we're sharing and showing people that somebody probably went through that same thing last week or somebody's going through something right now. Right. But understand that the key is not to just say, I give up. I throw in the towel. Because if we go back to some of the, the people in the Bible days, they never gave up. Yeah. They kept going and they walked by faith. And they allowed God to lead them. And that's what we've got to do is take it all back to when I started off by saying that we are king's kids. So we were built to be victorious. We were, we're not going to fail, but we've got to allow God to do his thing. Right. And that's what me and you are doing is we, we get whooped all the time yeah. by God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I may say something to Kendall and go in the room and be like, oh, Lord. You know what I mean? God, that wasn't, that wasn't, if I say I'm a king's kid and I'm your child, then I can't be talking to my husband like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not even just my husband. I can't talk to the people who work with me, the people who are a part of Rock Soul. I have to treat everybody with the love of Christ. And that takes time. When right. people start coming on board, it takes time to get to know that person. Yeah. You know, we got so many different personalities on board. And so I just feel like the power in agreement, that, that it takes time to get to that point. Yeah. Right? That makes me think about that parable of the sower. <clears throat> and he say, you know, basically, long story short, I'm paraphrasing for the sake of time. Tosses these seeds out there. You know, the bird comes down, swoop, takes up a seed. You know what I mean? That's, that's like your, your, your social interference. That's, that's your propaganda, things that get in the way of your faith and your walk. 
and then you got some stuff that sprouts up real quick, but it doesn't really have good roots and mm -hmm. foundations, and so the sun scorches it. Mm -hmm. That's that's people who come into the kingdom and they on fire. Yeah. You know, you can't oh, tell yeah. them nothing. As soon as they get saved on Sunday, on Monday, they're trying to hold you accountable. Yeah. And they're trying to quote <laughs> scripture. But that, that fire of tribulation is going to come to test their rooting system. But yeah. then you have the seed that takes root and the roots go deep. And not only can it sustain all of the ele elements of the environment, when the sun comes through, it can withstand because it's still connected to that water source beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do when we look at marriage or relationships that are important to us. Because we'll approach a business and make an investment knowing we're not going to see a return in maybe a year. It may take two, three years to become profitable. You yeah. have that understanding. Why can't we do that same thing with yeah. emotional equity yeah. and Ooh. intimate equity mm. and the finances of the heart where we say, okay, we're going to join into this business of marriage together. Mm -hmm. But we understand it's going to take time to get a return on that investment. Mm -hmm. We could approach it different, but we want everything right now. Yeah, and I can't do. think of any single situation where you make an investment today and you get a return today. Pretty much, pretty much how Jakes was saying with Abraham and Sarah. Facts. I, power couple. I never power looked at couple. Abraham and Sarah like a power couple. I didn't either. Yeah. But he broke that thing down so dope. But he was basically just saying like Sarah and Abraham wanted a child. They wanted a child when they wanted a child. Mm -hmm. God didn't give her a child till she was 100. <laughs> Man, I know them hips. Right, Jason's like, right, yo, boy. I'm 100. Be running chasing a two-year-old. I ain't got the strength, God. But it was all in his plan. Right. You know what I mean? And if you think about that, you'd be like, yo, he did. Like, he gave her a child when she was 100 years old. When he, t when he sent the angel to even tell her, God yeah. said, she laughed. Yeah. But, okay, laughed. break it down. Yeah. But, but tell that but Abraham story. Laughed. I can't, I can't, I don't. One thing about me is I, I try to build on things, but I, 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 I'm real uh, a stickler for like plagiarism and things like that, which you can't mimic any great man of, uh, of God. But it was an eye opener for me because you do always look at Sarah no more than you always look at Eve for her demonstration. Yeah. But if you look beneath the surface, you'll start to see what well, man, he fell first. Yeah, in some form or fashion, whether it was with Eve, why wasn't she covered? Well, how, how did the snake have an opportunity? There's, I don't care even if my wife is on the road and I'm at home, no snake has room to come and convince my wife to bite that fruit because I'm going to cover you right. to, 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 to no end. And the same thing with Abraham. Um, so I want to kick it like this. Okay. <clears throat> For us men who may be clueless or blinded you know, from our lack of knowledge as a woman, what do you look for, or what do you think women in general look for? I know you can't speak for all women, but, you know, just open conversation. What do you look for from us men as it relates to showing signs of being in agreement? <laughs> um, I think it's just to listen more to, to the woman mm -hmm. and trust that we sometimes know what, what we're talking about. Like, yeah. I'm a dreamer. I'm a dreamer. I dream heavy. I think I talked about that. And how, the, my husband bought me my first true dream book to break it down spiritually because you can go online and look up a bunch of stuff. You can see a bunch of stuff. But Be careful. The book that I have is a prophet. Um, and I keep that book really close to me. But I jot down all my dreams. And so when God gives me something, I think if the woman, sometimes it's hard for the woman, because they used to do it all the time in the Bible days. The woman would go to the man. Who is that? Her Herod? 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 Who did they take Jesus to because they needed him to approve the crew? Like the, uh, yeah, it was Her Pilate. Pilate. Yeah. Pilate? Yeah. Remember his wife was like, I had a dream. Yeah, Don't yeah, touch yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and he listened. At first, he went out. He was like, just, what did he say? I can't remember. He was like, uh, take old boy that was a murderer. Mm -hmm. They ain't want him. They ain't want him. But he listened to his wife. I think sometimes it's hard in this day and time, 2020, for your wife to come and be like, I had a dream. And then you said, you know what I mean? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. God didn't come to me and tell me that <laughs> first. We've been there. But sometimes it's like you, we want you guys to just trust and listen. Not that we're trying to tell you what to do or tell you we don't want to rule, but we love you so much that we feel those same pains that we feel when our children are acting out or if our, something happens. So we love you that much that we'd be like, we'll fight for y'all. Yeah. Straight up. <laughs> Literally. You know I will. I'm like, what? Uh, so so I, I think that is the thing that we want you guys to do more is listen and understand that we're coming to you. And even if we give you that, we're still sitting back like, okay, babe, so how you want to do it? 
Okay, if God gave it to me, he showed me this. Now, he didn't tell me how we, so now that God has shown me, how should we do it? That You're still the leader. You're still the head. No doubt. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but sometimes it's just kind of hard, I feel like, for men to take advice or take, you know, whether it's in their business, the wife may come to you and say, you shouldn't do it that way. Maybe you should try. And it's like, I'm the man. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. Well, that's an insecure crime. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to use an example of the movie 300. Now, that's my joint. And, I like and and Leonidas was debating if he was going to go against the, the prophecy or whatever the case may be. And he went and asked his wife, like, what should I do? He knew he was going to do something. But she was basically saying, you know, don't do what a king would do. Do what a free man would do. Mm. And that led a whole revolution. It was that I, it was it was when you look at him and you see like wow I never looked at it like that because he was still wrestling and toying toiling with the decision based on his crown. Mm -hmm. But she talked to him as mm -hmm. a man, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and he because every decision he was making he was trying to filter through the crown and the responsibility. She said, "I tell you what, King, don't worry about the crown. What mm -hmm. would a free man I love do?" That. And so that was a breakdown, you know, to echo and piggyback your statement where that's why it's so important to have a queen. Because left to ourselves, we're going to always be thinking about the crown because sometimes we let the crown define us. Mm -hmm. But with your woman, she just see that as a hat. Oh. You just see that as a, as a, as a, as a, yeah, as a, like as a, that. as a new era joiner, you know, 5950. Yeah. And so my wife can say, okay, I, I see your crown. It's cute, but let me talk to the man. Yeah. And when you get to that place, agreement can become not just a beautiful thing, but a consistent thing. Mm -hmm. And then you have a powerful rhythm. And then God yeah. sees that. He sees all the disagreement. He sees all the discord, all the division. He say, ooh, Ooh. I see some agreement down there. Yeah. I tell you what. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you're walking in power and authority, yeah. as we were all called to do. I love that. You know what I mean? And I, and I know you'll ride for me. I know you'll fight because you got hands. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got hands. Because you got hands. He said, try Jesus. <laughs> Don't try me. Because I got hands. <laughs> I love that. I love that how you put it. And I, I think I want to watch the movie tonight with you. Oh, that's it's what's up. Yeah, let's watch it. Because what, 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 the way you said that goes back to when I said we as women, we feel like the how we feel. She she didn't hit him with the because you who you are, you know what I mean, hold your, they watching you, you know what I mean, keep yeah. your image. You know, she hit him with the I could care less about any of that. Right. I love that. Right. And that's when you know that you have you are at that place where you are a power couple. Yeah. Where you're making moves that number one God is leading you and you're making moves and you're blessing this person, and you're blessing that person and because we you're doing it together. Right. You know? Right. That makes sense? Absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? That dress makes sense. Um, okay, next question. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so give an incident and you got I'm giving you a straight up free pass. Give an incident where we were not in agreement. How did that affect you as a woman? Um, hmm. Baby, we've got a lot of, let me just see. Mm hmm We ain't just get her. Well, pretty much business-wise, I think we're, we don't really, we, we, I think we're always in agreement. Now? Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Say it with your chest. You give an incident. Wait, 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 wait. Um... Dang, I wasn't ready for that. Okay. Um, uh, incident when we were not in agreement. Uh... Zion, let's use her. Cause I'm never in agreement with everything you give. You say for her. That's my baby girl, though. Yeah, but I don't agree with some of the things <laughs> because she is a bit like he has that daddy father like deep voice, she'll come to me and ask me for something first before she'll go to him because she, you know, it's like, what did she ask us one day? I got to tell it. I hope she don't get mad. Was it to go to, to down to Miami to or something? No. Oh. Oh, nah, that it, nah. Don't use it. We was don't in agreement. It. Yeah, oh, we yeah. were in agreement. <laughs> Let, let's pick some. Like, I, 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 know when, I know in business, um, Darikus will give us one because he's our yeah, cancel. Dar yeah. Give us an incident when we weren't in agreement and probably blew your phone up. <laughs> How much we owe you? Because <laughs> <laughs> the main thing I want to get to is how it made you feel. You know, we've gotten beyond it, so there's no, there's no. I know, and that's why I can't. Oh, that's know, good. Right? Watch this. That's why I can't really think of one off the bat. 
because I'm learning to move on. Because you can hold on to stuff, mm. and in every argument you get into, you're still stuck with that same situation. And I'm starting to do this. Like, I can't even remember when, because yeah. we've been building and building and building so strong that I don't even want to remember when. I just want right. to stay right here and focus on this. I don't want to keep focusing on it. So I, it's hard for me. I know on tour we had a lot of disagreements because... I think we were just seeing each other every day and working yeah. every day. Yeah. But that was business things. Boom. We, Let, okay. let's, uh, the, the last virtual concert we did, <clears throat> when okay. when you felt like me and Marciano were stepping into your creative, uh -huh. right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And you said, y'all can do whatever y'all want. I'm not asking no questions. Y'all can have helicopters, giraffes, <laughs> and orangutans. Just don't just touch don't my touch creative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And something happened where... I wasn't touching your creative, but you actually came back and helped me understand how it is a part of your creative. Um, um, we didn't have Gordon oh, and yeah. Trey here. So it's a very important, and I have an all-girl band. who They are very talented, and I have singers who are very powerful and strong, so you have to have a certain sound. And we gel that sound with our sound guys, with Gordon and, mm -hmm. you know, um, James and Trey. Yeah. And, and so Ken and, and Marciano was going to bring in a whole new team. And I was like, you cannot do that. And they kept trying to say, well, it's COVID. And I was like, but y'all, we got the show plan. I'm telling you, it'll be epic fail. Not to say that those guys don't know what they're doing. They just don't know us. Right. So, yeah, that was the and last. So we had stripped it down because at first we was doing it here at the house. Yeah. We were supposed to do the show here. And at that point, we were just running a lean crew, so it didn't matter. But once we decided to move it to a full show, yeah. we didn't come back and say, okay, do you want the court? And she was hot. I was. And you felt like I didn't have your back. You yeah. know what I mean? You felt like after all this time, I should know better when what it was, I just wasn't doing my job with checks and balances, and it ended up costing financially yeah. to bring. But when we came into agreement, we put on a it was show. a monster show. It was beautiful. It was yeah. a show that I felt like, the, I was like, everybody yeah. should have seen this. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was, it, God, it, it worked out just the way it needed to work yeah. out. And my girls came in and so the power in agreement. Like, okay. it was, yeah. We, so, yeah. let me do it on the flip side. Right. Give an example when we did walk in unbroken agreement. And how did that make you feel as a woman and as my wife? Now I just said and told you I forgot about everything. That's the good stuff. <laughs> oh, so, so give it when yeah, we were an in example, agreement. When we were in agreement. I, I know one come to mind to me. But um, when we agreed to to join our accounts together. Oh, yeah. I think he's gonna say that. One. Oh, of course. That's that. Listen, that was the main thing. Like, tell them how that came about. The dream you had. Oh, babe, I done had a million dreams. About the wallet. You want me to run and get my dream book? No, 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 we good. Though I would love to see you stand up and go get it. Hey, I'm a full-grown husband. I'm a full-grown husband. I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I did, okay, so I had a dream, but I've had millions of dreams. It was of a black wallet. Okay. That's all I remember. And was it uh, both like money? It was, it was money in it. It was a black wallet. It was it was, it was like money coming in from two different things into the one wallet. And you came to me and you was like, I think we need to join oh, yeah. our accounts together. Yeah, because because you can't, okay, in a marriage, if, if we're coming as one, there is no such thing as I got an account, he got an account, he don't know what's going on my stuff, because I'm going to tell you what happens. It's, then that brings division. Mm -hmm. It brings, like it's. And it's, the enemy don't need but a peephole. Just a little bit, right? And so when God gave me the dream, because when we first got married, I was like, I'm not gonna, I refuse to be, just because I'm a celebrity, I'm taking my husband's last name. I went and changed my last name. Um, and I came to him and I was like, we are one now. And there seems to be something not, what is this? That's What's, what it was. We kept having these hiccups and, 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 every, and things and weren't everything. hitting right. Yeah. Things weren't landing right. Yeah. And you was like, you was like, I believe God is telling me that. I'm not going to bless y'all until y'all are completely one. One second. What are you looking for? A drop cord? I knew it. Okay. Something's about to go dead. If you go and look in the laundry room and those closets. Mm -hmm. I, okay. Nice long one. I'm sorry, baby. I didn't oh, mean no, I just no, no, saw no. him. Good. I was like, he didn't say nothing you're and good. it'll end up going dead. That's when you know we lie. We forget to charge our phones up sometimes. Like, you know, we just sorry. ain't nothing pre-recorded. But go ahead. But I yeah, no, go. that we stuff was like not panning out right. And then that's when I had the dream. And whenever I have the dreams... And things seem like it stands out, like, a, like I'm looking through it a, with a magnifying glass. That while it was huge, it was like, I was like, yo, we got we got to come together. And as soon as we did, what? I mean, we've been rocking ever we've since. We've been rocking ever since. God's been opening doors. Like, we don't, that, I'm going to tell you one thing we do not fight about. 
money. We don't fight about money. We never we had a single fight, fight about, about money. money. But when we met each other, like, your company was bringing in millions, my company was yep. bringing in millions, and then more important, we got together, neither one of us are materialistic people. We don't care about we none don't. of that stuff. And I'm so frugal. You know what I, mean? I won't spend none but time. But you didn't turn me. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. I understand. Yeah. I, I get it. Uh, I purchased here and there. Uh, but when I first met him, I purchased. You get a car. You get a car. You get a car. You get a car. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm like, what? For they can just drive right out of our life? Uh, right. You know what I'm saying? No, but, but, but as soon as we <laughs> became one in financial, that area, like doors just begin to open for us. Seriously. And so that is the power in agreement. Like, wow. yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it, it could be financially, it could be, you know, anything, I dare you. Like, I dare you, I dare you, I dare you. I dare you to go into the good book. I dare you to start finding sermons. And that's why I wanna say, you know, big ups to Transformation Church, the Potter's House. Uh, or sometimes we'll watch Elevation. We just, we don't, we just, we, we, we go where we're like, okay, we, we might get something here, we might get something there. But we thank God for all of those men and women who've been placed in our life and who's been there and done that because they always send us to the good book. And when I promise you, if you get there and you begin to pray with your husband, you begin to read the, the word, you tithe, you're doing, you're allowing God to lead you, doors will open. The power and agreement is so much there for you in, in, in that. It's just, it's so much. And my ear was tingling because I know people will sit here for 45 minutes and wait on one thing sometimes that they can interject negativity. Okay. We don't church hop. So let's be uh, clear. Just, uh, we go to transformation, but like we're, we're here with COVID. We got access to other things, but we are very much open-minded to different perspectives about the same thing because it would be no different than reading one author for the rest of your life. Sometimes it's good to be able to weigh things out. It's good to get different perspectives. When you're hungry, you're just trying to eat as long as it's of the same cuisine. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Well, I look at it like this. I just sat here and told y'all that I'm a king's kid. And I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> he went everywhere. Yeah, fact. <laughs> okay, right. like. Synagogue, he temple, was street, yeah, lake, like, water, hill. So, yeah, let, let's not miss the point. Stay Correct. with us. Because I think sometimes point. Take that's the meat from the bone. Yeah. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. My, my last question for you was, you know how sometimes when me and you might be at odds. Yeah. We just ain't right. Like, yeah. we can't hustle right, we can't push right, our workouts don't have the same energy. Same. But when we're in sync, we be like, who want it? Yeah. Who want what? Where you at? Who wants smoke? What my man saying, Troy, is there no one else? <laughs> is there no one else? You know what I'm saying? Oh, we got to watch that one, too. Man, I, well, I'm telling you. That's your favorite, baby. That okay, might be go my ahead. favorite I'm dress, though. Baby, stay on track. Mic check. The people, I disagree. <laughs> Come on. All right. Um... <clears throat> What is your posture towards the world and challenges that you encounter when we are in agreement versus when we are not in agreement? Just as a woman. I still hold my posture, but I go in my I go in my room. I don't even care. I don't care about the world. You call my phone and my wife mad at me, man. You now you can be me. mad at me, but if it be one of them, 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 you know what I mean. Just leave me alone so I can process. <laughs> okay. I already feel like. You know, and Kendall, you are my outside of God, and you and these kids are my strength. Strength like no, no other. other. Oh, yeah. oh. Strength like no other. Mm -hmm. And reach just to me. I'll take it. I don't never sing you. Why you be nervous to sing to me, though? I don't be nervous. I just think it's corny. Come on, can you imagine you just wake up, I be in the shower like, woo! Yo, that, that's like that, that, that's like that's that's like being a rancher, right? And you got twenty thousand cows out there, but you can't get one glass of milk. I'm just saying though, babe, you that's when you'll be like, yo, I love her, but she thinks she all that, bro. Nah, like she won't sing to me, man. Like I hear her singing, and I gotta go sit by the door on the low and just be like, Man. Yeah, that's corny. That's corny, babe. But anyway, you are my strength. And so when we're off and we're rocky. And that's how I know you're my soulmate, because it's like, we can't eat. <laughs> we don't. He be getting all skinny. I be like, when we start back talking, I be like, you hungry? He be like, I ain't ate today. I have to feed my baby. But that's how you know yeah. we have been placed together to, you know, we, we are soulmates. Yeah. So when, I'm, when I still hold my posture. Facts. Now, do I don't go do. out here and I don't be in the streets wilding, getting mad yeah, and being no, like, facts. I still, I still, I don't, how she said, I don't come off my chariot to throw tomatoes. Still sit there and hold my posture, but 
it's hard for me to, it's hard for me because right. you are my strength. Agreement is the same for me. Like, as a man, <clears throat> you don't even know what you feel as a man until you fall in love. You know what I mean? Because there's just certain things that just don't get tapped into. That's why you can fall in love, man, and you be like, what is this? Why am I responding like this? Why am I acting like this? Like, I'm out of character. And it's like, nah, you're being recalibrated towards the right way of loving and, you know, being loved and, and giving love. But I know when we're in agreement, I feel like I can run eight businesses at one time. I can I can sit in the office for 12 hours. I can read 20,000 books. I can handle. They be outside working out hard, pulling <laughs> muscles and yes, stuff. Lord. But you be pulling muscles when you're in love. He come back in the house and be like, you know what? I think I'm <laughs> <laughs> Hey, these at home workouts ain't safe. I swear, I to be like, babe. I'd be like, what's wrong? Kendall walked around for a week like this. Like this. <laughs> like this. I was out there supersetting biceps, <laughs> and I tossed in both arms. I literally was walking around like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> I couldn't do nothing, my dude. Uh, but that's what happens when you love, because when we're not talking, we My biceps was out. in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> we don't work out. We be like, what? Kids be knocking at the door. I be like, huh? They, and the kids know when we off, too. Dallas will come and be like, where pop? Oh, he pisses me off. I be like, he in the bedroom. Oh. Where's Pop? Yeah, I'm like, you know, so that's another thing. When you're, when you have a certain rhythm going on, that that energy runs through your whole house, your the whole vibration. business. Yes. The vibration. Yes, and when it's off, your whole house ain't in agreement. Yeah. Everything is off. Yeah. Leo's off. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you got to keep that in mind, too. Yeah, I know agreement has never been more important to me as it is now, <clears throat> um, because I, I reached the point of understanding that not only do I not want to do it on my own, I can't do it on my own. There's no victory that I could accomplish out here that will be sweet if we don't accomplish it together. You know, I'm very much a part of our soul, like you're a part of Salute First. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no separation. We're going to, if we have a business, we're going to find a way to both participate in that business. It doesn't matter if she's doing a lipstick line. I'm going to figure out how to get the cheapest price on, you know, the manufacturer of, of the casings and so on and so forth. I'm gonna fi find a way for us to be in agreement on anything because j if I assume I don't have a role in something and that there's no place for me, I believe that leaves room to not be in full agreement. Now, I don't, I don't mean forcing your way into something, but we have to have a hand in everything. We have to touch mm -hmm. and agree on everything in some capacity. Her gift has room in anything that I can imagine, even if it's just dealing with men or if it's dealing with the homeless, there's a place in her there's a place in there for her to come alongside me and me alongside her so that right. we can be in agreement, not just in word, but also in spirit, action, and deed. And I don't even think that is you have to be, but you should want it to be, especially if you're a power couple. Correct. You should If you want to be in it. order, you yes. don't have to be. Now, you yes, can yes, have yes, what yes, they call yes, it yes. organized confusion uh, and acceptable chaos, but if you want to be in harmony, you want to be in unity, and you want to be in order, agreement is a non-negotiable. Hey, when Abraham came and Sarah and said, look, we finna go up here to Greensboro, I think it's some good land up there. Greensboro? You know, yeah, he was in Greensboro. <laughs> Sarah did say, check it out. I'm, you go to Greensboro. I'm going to stay down here in Charlotte Gastonia. I'm going to stay in this area. You go, no. She peaked up and she went where her husband went. Right. She probably didn't always want to go, but it's, they, when they finally came into that power of agreement and they walked, they blessed so many people and doors were open for them. So right. I was excited about that message. That was good, good, yeah, good. Yeah. Mm -mm, good. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. So I wanted to leave a little bit more time, especially since we, we've never done like a, a series or we've never done like a part one, part two where anything kind of collaborated with each other. So last week we did agree to disagree. This week we got the purpose of two coming together in agreement. So with those two standing out there, I wanted to make sure we left a little bit of room in case there were some questions, suggestions, you know, different topics of agreeing to disagree or agree that we may have overlooked. Um, <clears throat> that we could tackle since we're here together in agreement. I, I agree. I, now, you keep on starting. Now, they always begging for you to do something. Now, they, they sitting there Honey, like... Honey, I missed the stage. I can sit here, but see the shot. What you got? I'm just playing. <laughs> what you got, bro? What are some signs? This question goes out to both of y'all. What are some nonverbal signs that something has happened? That something has went the wrong direction? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. 
for me, when it comes to Kendall, I notice his whole demeanor track when he gets really, really, really quiet. And I can tell and I'll be like, you okay? I might ask that 10 times, give him time to tell me. And then that's when I have to say, you're not okay, but you, you'll say something. And that's when he'll be like, well, such and such and such. He gets really, really <laughs> quiet and he starts thinking too much. He's already a thinker. So he does that all day long. It's a certain way though that a certain thing he does and I'd be like, yeah, something's on his mind. I know something's up. Man. I can't say the same for my wife because my wife will come and tell me everything, <laughs> anything on her mind, anything on her heart. Like she's going to come to me one so I'm aware and two, see if I have any advice or 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 if I just support, you know, whatever move you need to make left or right. So I um but I can tell if she's been on the phone with, like, boom. So I may not hear a conversation, because we don't do that eavesdropping nonsense, whatever. Like, she need to walk away or go outside and have a phone call. I don't make the assumption, like, being insecure that she's talking to a dude. She needs to better talk freely. Um, but sometimes she can come back in, and I'll be like, you OK? And she'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, who was that? And I'll be like, OK, you know. But your energy is off or something like that. And then she'd be like, well, I don't want to worry, but I don't want to put this on yes, girl stuff mm -hmm. or you know, it is girl stuff. But I, I need to get down to the bottom of because, again, our, our vibration is being impacted. And so we almost have to address it. Otherwise, you know, the, the vibration is going to be off. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, to both of y'all, have y'all ever had a moment or how do you handle when you feel like one of the one of you has given up. Mm. Given up? Yeah, because I think people are dealing with situations where a person is tapped out. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, TV yeah, yeah. talk about somebody can mentally tap out before they physically tap mm -hmm. out. Mm. Mm. Well, let me, let me, if I may, um, there have been times in this marriage where I have not met the needs of my wife and she tapped out. Um, we're a touchy-feely couple. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to touch her every chance. I, yeah, I'm going to touch her as soon as we get hey, out hey, of the hey. live. Stay on track. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're a touchy. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, but right. we're a touchy feely couple. Um, when we wake up in the morning, first thing I do is I kiss her. I tell her I love her. I tell her how beautiful she is. Um, when we go to bed, she can't, like, she sleeps on my chest. So, like, she's going to lay on my chest. Until she gets sleepy, then she turns up on her good side. We got a rhythm. We always, three times a day, what we going to eat, who going to cook, whatever. Um, we have a rhythm. <clears throat> if that's off? When it's off, everything is off. Like, the hug doesn't reciprocate. Um, the text is a real blah, real nonchalant. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> um, so I can always tell when... She has clocked out, and now I have to do some homework and, and, and get dirty and, and, and dig out of this situation to figure out what did I do, what did I say, what did I not do, what did I not say that put you in a place where the vibration was off, and just hope that you'll be kind enough to give me an opportunity to correct that wrong. I think that marriages work. And just like you get up every morning and you go to your job from 9 to 5, and you're given everything that you got to give, you know what they're expecting for you to do, you do it. You have to do that same thing at home every day. You cannot go to work and say, I'm going to give what I got today because you're going to get fired. Mm -hmm. And marriage is the same way. If you give half, you're not paying attention, you're not catering, you're not, yeah, the other person is going to clock out. And what happens is it's going to take you forever to get that job or that position back. So I will say this. If you, when you do get it back, number one, I always say the power in prayer. Because I'm not going to say if. If it's something, your marriage you, you want to fight for, a relationship you want to fight for, go get it back. You know how to go do it. But when you do, don't take back, don't take no days off. And if you're going to take some days off, put in your two weeks notice and let your girl or your, 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 your husband know, hey, I'm going to hang out with my friend. I just need one or two days, you know, to get my thoughts together because we're all human. We have to have moments where we break away. But it is a job, and you cannot go in on at 9 and say, I'm just going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm not doing that today, and I'm not doing that today, because you're going to get fired. Right. And it's the same way with marriage. So you can never just be taking breaks, because it seems like you go back and get the person, and then you, you back like, ah, I got it, I'm just going to chill. It don't work like that. And it's by it, for whether that's going with the male or the female. 
So once you do get him or her back, if you want it bad enough, allow God to teach you how to go back. But you could be talking to her or him in a way that's, that's clocking them out. You could be, you know, that it's certain things you could be doing. So allow God, ask, ask God to show me how to go and get, if this person is, is who's supposed to be in my life, I need you to mold me and, and, and make me over. Give me a re, re I need a, you know how they say, remodel, redo, yeah. re, yeah. Remix. Re, 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 yeah, do give me something different. And when you do get that person back, we'll go to work every day. To go to work every day. Clock in your job and work for it because marriage is, is work. Yeah. Relationship is work. Yeah. And that's whether you did something and you're trying to uh, atone for it or if you haven't done anything and you just can't get through that wall of that person because of their silence or their distancing. Um, just leave, leave the environment and the room susceptible for that person to yeah. come back at some point in time and let, let them process. And again, like I always say, patience is what you do while you wait. Mm -hmm. So while that person is not speaking, if they're not being intimate, what are you doing? Are you still walking with a smile? Are you still greeting them? Or do you return dirty for dirty and you start getting cold and then you start getting bitter and then you start rejecting, yeah. then you care a lot of chances for it anyway. Yeah, and just right. remember, love truly conquers all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. How do you point out the agreement that God may have given for you or you in your spouse? Hmm. Have y'all ever had a time where you feel like God has spoken to y'all and it's uh, about an agreement? How do y'all... And you, because what, what can happen is a person feel like, nah, you think you're right, you're trying to say God, is that what you're saying? Like, you're trying to say God told you that you, and you... How do you know that it's because of God well, one thing I will say is don't play with God. Fact. If God ain't gave you something, don't use him. Fact. I can't stand that. I'm going to give you a story. When I first won Idol, everybody knew how much I loved God, and everybody wanted to prophesy to me. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> and stories. I used to be like, some of that stuff, you just got that from the tabloids because it's out right now. <laughs> like, I knew what was for me because I knew what I was going through. So it was, it was every now and again somebody would come and Dariki Snow it and I would just be left with tears like, yo, that's, that was God. Because that was she or he just told me not. Dariki didn't know it. He didn't know it. I was only talking to God about it. So I will say this. Let's not blame everything on God just because you want your way. I think you can, you're going to get in trouble for that. But I think if you're with your soulmate and you chose this person, you love him, you love her, you know you both have a relationship with God. If your partner comes to you and says, God showed me this in the dream or God gave it to me, you trust it and you check yourself. Trust the God in them even if you have issues struggling with that person. Trust yeah. the God in them because there's been times my wife came to me about something and I remember saying, I'm like, yeah, he showed that to you. He didn't show that to me. Yeah, you did. But I trust the God in you yeah. even when I didn't trust what I saw. I did the same thing. I would be so mad at Kendall. He'd be like, God already showed me. In three days, I'd be like, man, please, I ain't talking to you for two weeks. Like, God, but in three days, <laughs> something will happen, and God, and I would be like, oh, shoot. So I, I say you have to, like you said, trust the God in your mate, and if it ain't God, don't use, yeah. don't use that. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't but one time when I know he sent something to both of us was this very platform right here. We never set out to do this. Right. This was going to be one single post about one incident that we just wanted to address and now we're sitting here weekly with you know hundreds of thousand people tuning in and realizing that God is saying okay I need you to birth the ministry out of you what we're doing is we're exposing our flaws mm -hmm. we're exposing our authenticity and some sacred things that people would be more likely reluctant to put out there but we're doing it for the hope that it can bless one brother to go back and, and get his wife or, or, or one wife to go back and give her husband another opportunity, the spirit of forgiveness. What we're trying to do is take all of the filters off in mm -hmm. hopes that it will allow you to do, do the same thing in your relationship. So this is something where God said, I want y'all to keep pushing this thing because we don't know where it's going. We don't know what it's doing, you know, but we're going to continue to be obedient because there's obviously a need for it. And, and we accepted the, the mandate and agreement. Right. It goes back to when I was saying we chase perfection. <clears throat> How we all, you know, most of the time girls do it a lot. Guys do it too, just on the low though. Like okay. everybody trying to seek validation. Yeah, we chase, we chase perfection. We chasing, we chasing. Do you know I, I sleep so good at night because I don't want to be perfect and I don't want to make people think I'm perfect. I sleep so good at night knowing that 
Everything that's out there on me, nine times out of ten, I gave it to them. In interviews, I gave you the information. You can't hold nothing over me because I'm allowing myself to just be human. And I tell you all the time, I'm not perfect. I don't want to be perfect. You know what I mean? I think that's that's the problem that we have in a lot of relationships and businesses, family. Everybody wants to get chased in perfection. So why do you think that is? I, I, I think we're chasing perfection because we are afraid to embrace our flaws. But that's the uniqueness. So everybody's wave riding. An outfit come out, everybody got the same paint. Everybody got the same type of chain that come out. Everybody waiting on the J's the first day they come out. Nobody's willing to be an individual, to be unique, to be original. And they think the only way to get validation is to hide within a crowd and a sea of masses instead of standing out like that one golden egg amongst all black eggs and standing tall saying, I'm different, I'm flawed, this is me, love it or love it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody's trying to fit in. And yeah. that's sad. Yeah. That's I mean, sad. Because if you really want to find true happiness, I'm, I, if you really want to tap into true happiness, start looking at the things that you've never looked at before. Start looking at stuff you never looked at before, like flowers, like trees, like I could be outside sometimes and I'll be like, Lord, I thank you. That wind just, my grandma used to do that. Lord, that wind just came from over here and just swept by me and made me feel so good. We used to be like... Grandma, it was just me. Romance by God. But I but got it. Right. Yes, it's yeah. the, the little things that we overlook, which is why our relationships are taking hits because we're so busy chasing what we see on Instagram, so busy trying to make everybody believe we're this, we're that. And then you be divorced for two years and your whole friends and family don't even know it because you're scared to tell them because you don't want nobody to say nothing about you. And then they be like, yo, why you ain't say nothing? You like, yeah, I didn't want anybody. Man, bum that. We are all human. We are all flawed. When you get to the point where you are and you, you embrace your flaws, you embrace the things that you've been through, you accept it, and you allow it to make you a better person, and you keep going, you keep growing, and you use your test for a testimony to bless somebody else to say, I've been there before. Get up. Let me show you something. I, I've been, get, get up. Let me show you. I've been through this. I've been through that. You see that scar right there? I got that from the, you know, because where you at right there, I was there like a year ago. I got that, but look at me now. Right. You see what I'm saying? And like for men, it used to be a time when the bad boy was the rebel, right? Yeah. The bad boy was the outcast. He was the black sheep. Now everybody wants to be a thug. Everybody wants to be hard, want to be gangsters. So the men of good character, the men of nobility, the men of integrity, we are not a black sheep. We are not an oddball. Mm. And that's why I like to stand. I'm, I'm always going to go against the grain and crash against the waves because that's just who I am. But it's like you you... When, when Tupac was claiming to be a thug, it was radical. It was different. It's not different anymore. Not everybody wants to be it. So change the game and decide to be a gentleman. De de decide to bring swag back to integrity and bring some flaws and finesse back to having good character. I got something I want to say. Say that. Even though Tupac had that same hard side about him, the one thing I can tell you, too, was he wasn't dumb. Facts. He was very <laughs> smart. He was very, very smart. So, hey... If you got that rough side about you, be you, be do your thing, but educate yourself. And I think that's why I was like, I fell in love with my husband because I was like, yo, you smart. Like, you you know what I mean? Like, Tupac would open his mouth and he got serious. He had something to say. He said it. It made a whole lot of sense. He was very well educated. You know what I mean? So I'm saying, be, if, if you got a rough side about you, if you don't, be who you are, but, 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 but allow yourself to make some changes down here so when you leave this world, our father will say to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. You touched this person. You helped this person. You blessed this person. You didn't leave this person out. And, and I think that's why we got we to change the world today because if we don't change it, we're going to lose marriages like that. We're going to lose our young people like that. We're going to lose our businesses like that. <coughs> sorry about that. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. I was the only way we could... But not but, forgive me. The only way we could change the world is changing ourselves. Yes. And, and, and sometimes, like, how do we change the world? Everybody's saying it's impossible. No, it's with everybody taking responsibility for their own actions and everybody walks their own line with integrity. That's really all it takes. It doesn't take a big campaign. It doesn't take a 100 million man march. Uh, no, no digs, trust me, because that was a powerful movement. It doesn't take all of these sophisticated things. I always say keep it eloquently elementary. Eloquently elementary. Hmm. 
if every man decided to take ownership for the children he birthed and he chooses to take responsibility for his home and his own actions and make atonement for his own sins, if every man in the community did that, crime would go down. You want to change the higher things, deal with the root. Mm -hmm. If you want your building to stand, boom, foundation. foundation. So if everybody was accountable to being as, as righteous as they can be, though we all covered in the righteousness of Christ, I got that, but you still have a duty and responsibility, mm -hmm. then the world will reflect what we want it to look like. Mm -hmm. But everybody's in the, every, every, we, 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 we have no we have no fellowship as a whole because everybody's married and sold out to their own individualism. Mm. You in love with me, myself, and I. That's your orgy. Mm. Mm. Last you? question for tonight. Mm -hmm. and I even want to know the answer to this. Oh, boy. So y'all been married six years. So seven, eight years ago, y'all didn't know each other. Have your definition of love currently changed? I think we just said this, what are we, the other mm -hmm. night, remember, mm -hmm. yeah, uh-huh, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. keep it clean, though, keep it light, you know what I'm saying, keep it light. I wouldn't even go there, oh. but since you invited me. No. Okay. <laughs> let, let me talk for dudes real quick, if I, if I may. I knew nothing about love till I met my wife. Even though in relationship we was in love, we were going to be together for, you know, whatever the case may be. And I say that because now I can look back and see how much selfishness was candy coated in my demonstration. I knew the logistics. I knew what Valentine's Day meant. I knew what the birthday meant. I knew I, I, know I ain't supposed to talk to other girls. But I have never sat back and really took the time to study, to observe, to interview, to investigate the heart of a woman as I have with you. I was never compelled to do it. The way you love me made me want to do it. I, re I used to couldn't really figure out why you love me so much. And it caused me to change. You go ask my last 10 exes, you probably going to hear, he was a decent guy. He's a good guy. He was a monster. He was a savage. He was a, I don't know what you're going to get. But now that I understand that loving my wife means dying to self, I get mm -hmm. it. And... I'm willing to apologize. I'm willing I'm willing to start it off like the way we did today. I didn't have to do that. I could have just kept it moving and it just would have faded to the to the to the past, but I feel compelled to honor you in that way that you deserve to be honored and give you your roses while you while you right here. So for a man it's different because we don't see men operating in this fashion. I'm standing here right now sitting trying to exemplify something that I've never seen in another man. I'm trying to be something I haven't seen. I'm trying to, I'm looking for footprints, but they're not there. So I'm stumbling over my own, my own pattern. And a lot of men are dealing with that. But when you meet the white woman, man, her love is going to teach you how to love. And it's going to activate those things in you that you didn't even know existed. And that's for me personally. Mm. That's no cap. You better say it, man. <laughs> that's no cap. I mean, no cap. I thought I did. You know, I thought being a womanizer, I thought based on how she looked, how she was built, or how much money she had, like, I was letting those things identify. Yes, Lord. That's two, that's two receipts. <laughs> I need both my coupons. Can I see your book? Those are coupons. And you're going to wake up, it's on your pillow. But I just, I just, I just want to be honest, you know what I'm saying? I just, I just want to be honest. I, I had all of the books since. I had read the books. I had watched the movies. But I, I, I was unable to convert that into action. And even now, I'm still growing, learning how to love you because I don't want to lose you. I don't never want to let you go. You know what I'm saying? You my hitter. You my best friend. My and, hitter, my hitter. And so mm -hmm. there's times we be in separate rooms not talking, and, and I have to kill what I feel because what I feel is not more important than what we create. And that's love. So. You need another piece of paper, don't no, you? No, you get the paper. I'm trying to get these receipts, bro. <laughs> Listen, for me, I will say this. Most women, we live in fairy tale land. We grow up. I want the wedding like this. I want this. I want that. Every man you meet, you want he, he the one, he the one, he the one. We want love so that's what I think that for me, I know that my love is totally different. It's not the fairy tale love because we done been through some stuff. I think when you, you know what real love is after you, it's not the flowers every day, it's not the, it's none of that. It's when you can go through the nitty gritty 
when you can go through the storm, I'm talking about storm, <laughs> lightning, thunder, hell. Tsunami. When you can make it through that, that's when you know when you have true love. For me. Does that make any sense? And still hold your attraction. And still hold your attraction. Yeah, because like, it's it's different now. You look at you I look at him different. Good question, because we just we were sitting in the bed talking and he looked at me, I looked at him, and he was like, yo. I feel like I love you harder than I did when I, and I was like, I wanted to say that, but I, I didn't want you to think I didn't love you then. You know what I mean? I was like, it's it's different. It's different. When you get up and walk, I'm looking at him. When I'm, he looking at me, we study, flirt, we constantly, because we've been through some stuff. And that's the thing with love. You want the pit, you want the, the wedding, you want the cute stuff in the beginning. Then when time get hard, you're like, yo, I quit. I divorced. I want out. Yeah. That's not love. Love is when you can make it through thick and thin. You can, you can, you know, weather the storm. When you, that's that's true love, and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger as you go. It's like when we were sitting in a jacuzzi the other day, and I was sitting, and I was telling you, I was like, as I as I approach forty years next next week, I'll be forty, whoop, which, whoop. Is, which is blowing my mind. We're about to, we're gonna have a good time. Um, and I told you, I said, I went from different stages of attraction. I went from the attraction where it's like, you know, she just fine as hell. Like that was the flesh, the carnal, the the, the the visual to the eyes. Then I went through the attraction when we started knocking out big things and we started knocking out tours together and deals together. We were we were we were on the battlefield together. And I said, now I'm in, I'm entering into the stage where what I find attractive and sexy is the loyalty. It's knowing that I have no worry. I, I don't. I don't care what man tries to holler at my wife, send gifts to the house. I'm just gonna change it in and take the money and go buy me something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Nobody's gonna give to But I'm just. House. I'm saying I have no worries whatsoever with my wife. You cannot take her from me. That level of confidence, security from a man who's never had a father. I've never been able to stay in one place at one time in one season of my life. I've always been shaken and moved and tossed and thrown. And to be in a place where my heart is at a place where it's secure and it's got layer upon layer upon layer of protection from your integrity, your character, your classiness, your regalness, that level of loyalty and security is what I find attractive now. But it doesn't negate the other two. They all come together. That dress is that dress. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the dress is the dress. But when I look at you at a cross... We got this thing now, like we don't have to speak. We sit and watch a movie or something happen, we both look we at each other at the same time. Somebody say something, and we don't say nothing, we just look at each other like. Yeah. I love that, that, that space. It was weird, because the other day we were at, we went to one of our favorite restaurants in Charlotte called Eddie D's. Eddie D's, ooh, that was a good night. It was a good night, that was that some was good, good food, that was wasn't it? Was Jeez, that's night. my problem now. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> um, but we were sitting there and we were, you know, I think I ordered me an old fashioned. Now, this how you know you gotta, this my bestie. <laughs> I don't drink old fashions, he do. But anytime Kendall order a drink, what I do? Or food. Or food. You like your food tastes better. His tastes better, his drinks taste better. So I ordered old fashioned cause he got me on old fashioned. I like it <laughs> old fashioned. But anyway, long story short, we were just sitting, chopping it up and kicking and talking. And a man from behind us decides, but he was oh, with yeah. a, he was with two women, yeah. so I don't think he was doing it out of. But yeah. he he the lady came and she had another old fashioned. She was like, "This one is from uh, the man in the back." Mm -hmm. Now, as a married woman, you know, at first I was kind of like, uh, "I don't think I can receive that." I'm over there like sin too. <laughs> but it, it wasn't until it wasn't until I turned around and I looked at him. He was with two women, and he kind of was like, I, "You know, I, I I like you. I think you're dope. I like your music." You know, most yeah. men now that I'm married, they don't approach me in that that manner. Like, you know, dang, Fantasia, like they used to. They come up to me and say, "Nice to meet you." You know, salute to you. I love your music. And when I saw that he was coming in that posture, I was like, "Okay," you know. And I didn't want to be rude, but as a woman. I don't care where I am, even if I'm not with my man, like, it's a certain way I got to carry myself. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be receiving anything because I'm a married woman. And I, I could buy my own. I thank you. I appreciate it. But that was a moment for me that I looked at Kendall. He was just sitting there like, he saluted the man. And I was yeah, like, okay. Like good looking. You know, most men was That's like, what was that drink? I love it, you know? Yeah. But never that. And, and when we left, I looked at the table, me and Kendall, and I said, hey, I want to say thank you. And, 
he and the, he had two women with him, so it wasn't that he was doing it out of you mm -hmm. know, and I think that he could pick, we both could pick that up. But I was, I salute you for that because anytime we're somewhere, Kendall never shows like, you know, his butt or if somebody come up to me, he'll be like, who you talking to? He stands right there. You want to know why? Because like he just said, he knows the, what type of woman I am. I'm loyal. I'm classy. I'm elegant. And I rep Taylor everywhere I go. Everywhere you go. You know what I mean? Taylor girl. Taylor, girl. Missouri, yeah. Yeah. So now I think we have concluded our session, and I think that gives me the free will and the liberty to get back to my wife's dress. Kendall Lamar Taylor. Yes, Lord. Let me tell you something. Can we both fit in there? Let me tell you about the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Salute. Oh, oh forgive like, me. I got what? so hype. I got so hype. Forgive I'm, us, Lord. That dress. See, you talking about my dress, guys? God, is there anything that you can't do? Is there anything you're not willing to do for a willing heart? I thank you for the spirit of humility and correction. We both want to grow. We both want to elevate. And that cannot happen without your love and rebuke. So I pray that every couple, every single person, elderly, young, teenage, whatever, was able to receive something today that is fruitful to their lives. And not only let it be fruit, but let it produce seeds that will take root so that it will be everlasting and evident in their character and their demonstration in their lives. Continue to bring us clarity, Father, for everything that we know is rubbish to your knowledge. Teach us how to continue to cast our crowns at your feet and trust you above our own intellect. We love you. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the opportunity to speak. We thank you that our pain, our losses, our setbacks and our scars being healing ointment to other people's lives so that every single tear that we have shed has not been in vain. Yes, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you the honor that is due to you as a loving father and our God. Amen. You bet. Let me tell you something. Write it down. I want another one. <laughs> we'll tell you all another one. Oh, sorry, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know who you are at, whatever, but listen, I need these coupons. And you know I'm going to pull it out? I'm going to pull it out when she ain't speaking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull it out when she ain't speaking to me. Whatever. Give me that mad sleazy kind of look. Listen, shut up. <laughs> we want to thank y'all for tuning in again. At Shaw Nice. Thank you, Dorikis. Thanks. Thank you. And I think maybe next week we might have a guest, if not next week. But we've got some some dope artists that we love and respect that's been reaching out. It's so we'll crazy. see. It's crazy. Yeah. So, but it's because of you guys, yeah. honestly. So hopefully the guests will be... Entertaining to y'all, yeah, spice it up a little case. bit, but um, this thing is growing, so let's grow together. Yeah, DJ Shine so Nice, take us out, homie. Back to the dress.
for the big girl. Watch out 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 for the big girl. Before we go, I want to shout out because I was like, yo, since COVID has been happening, I've been listening to some really, really good music. And I want to thank these artists for making the vibes great in our house. Again, I say Masego. If you have never heard of him, please go look him up. Ari Lennox, I want to say I love your stuff. Sir, um, what's the other young lady name I've been listening to? Huh? Uh, it's a Oh, don't worry. Yeah, I'm shout out more, but I love those vibes. Sego, Iron Lennox, Sir. Oh, and it's in pack. Oh, come on, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Come on, thank you, thank you. you spoke to me. Yeah. Where'd they go?
won't we know it? You just poke that bottom up and hey, I'll get you hot. I know you won't so well. And when I walk in, all that I want to hey, is you say, Daddy, son, home for me. And I know you've been waiting for this loving all day. You know your daddy's home. So you ain't got to give my love in the way So when my lady say hey, hey, hey darling hey, hey. So when my lady say hey, 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 hey darling hey, 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 I ain't got to do a lot of flexing But you already know what it is And girl tonight we're gonna do a lot of sex on When you call, I say I'm not home. I see your face, I hear my favorite song. Should I send an email at home? You're the number one topic on the phone. I wonder if you know. I do have a Ladies, we got 
Sean Nice, the blend. Roll with it, roll with it. Yeah. I don't know what y'all gonna do. Y'all gonna keep fucking tonight, or y'all gonna get on in. You know what I'm saying? I've been up in here tonight, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's true.
whispers me to sleep and wakes me up again. Up again. Sometimes oh, I yeah. swear I hear you call my name. My you wash away the my pain. Yes. 
child All that I'm giving Is for the love of you All right now It's simple, I love it, happy new year, happy new years, our conversations, outrageous, you smile, and I smile, then I say, oh, this is getting personal, 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 let's stay for a while. And play, girl, let's make this a moment. Oh, giving you the best of me. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh, having you close to me. Amazing, outrageous. Oh. Give your best to me. Stop! 